While Prague was preparing for an early spring, investors gathered last week for the annual forecasting event of the CFA Institute a loaded topic intensely discussed by New Sparta chairman Jerome Booth and other guests was the worldwide perception of emerging markets, while Central and Eastern Europe has little in common with continental East Asia, Sub-Saharan Africa, or Patagonia for that matter. Countries from these four regions, along with other developing nations, have been grouped together by investors under the label of emerging markets. Mixed together in one pot, stocks and bonds across emerging markets usually move together swinging up and down in concert. But, according to Dr. Booth, emerging market evangelist and the keynote speaker at the prestigious CFA dinner, the global financial crisis has changed the economic tune around the world and allowed emerging markets to increasingly move to their own individual rhythms. And in 08, when the uh, uh, market makers deserted emerging markets and the corporate debt yields got up, uh, when it started going up, when they got to about 15%, we had a whole new range of investor base coming in, buying the assets. They were local investors. So what you have from emerging markets is diversity. You have a different perception of risk. You don't have this uh, herd-like mentality you get in the West. While conventional wisdom still holds that emerging markets are particularly risky and intransparent, Jerome Booth counters his skeptics with one very convincing fact. Real economic activity is 56%. Um, uh, purchasing, on a purchasing power parity basis, 56% of the global economy is now in emerging markets, the bulk, and growing fast. And these countries have enormous productivity uh, ahead of them. Uh, Culinary delights, high-end jewelry stores, and luxury performance cars have become a permanent fixture in Prague and not just in Prague. Since the fall of the Berlin Wall 25 years ago, the emerging markets of Central and Eastern Europe have radically overhauled their geopolitical arrangements and are now firmly anchored economically within the European Union. I believe Central Europe perception has changed uh, relatively dramatically, but uh, I also believe the Eureka moment for investors is, uh, is for uh, some over, like uh, uh, in our case, we finance our sovereign debt uh, cheaper than France most of the time. We had even moments when, uh, when we finance ourselves cheaper than Germany. An impressive fact. Does this mean that the Czechs are now playing in the same league as the big global economies? I was asked uh, just before the dinner whether the Czech Republic was, in my view, an emerging market. It's a very loaded question. But I immediately answered yes. And, and that's because of my definition of what an emerging market is. Um, for me, all countries are risky. Um, the phrase, by the way, risk-free, is an abuse of the English language. There is no such thing. Um, all countries are risky. Emerging markets are the ones where that risk is perceived, where it's priced in. And if we get to a position where the usefulness of the phrase emerging markets disappears. It'll be because we finally start pricing in the risks in developed countries. Instead, prejudices still prevail amongst the majority of global investors. Well, I think the trouble with the markets uh, in Central and Eastern Europe are with how they are viewed. And they are viewed and managed by large portfolio managers in the US, UK, Western Europe. And they are still uh, following the dogma of the emerging markets being volatile. And when something's going to happen, then it happens in the emerging market. So regardless of the fundamentals and given the low volatility of the markets, uh, typically the, the local markets get hit. Uh, by the global macroeconomic uh, news more than the local fundamentals. Unhappy about how they were being perceived by international institutions and global fund managers, emerging markets began to take action. After the Asia crisis, um, when, you know, depending on outside insurance, the IMF was seen as suboptimal by a lot of emerging markets, emerging markets decided to self-insure. And to do that, they started building up central bank reserves. A number of exporters of oil also did the same thing at the same time. And you've had this enormous growth in reserves, such that today, 80% of global central bank reserves are owned by emerging market central banks. Emerging market central banks own about $11.5 trillion in so-called liquid sovereign bonds from Europe and the US. And the sovereign wealth funds of these countries, another four or $5 trillion. This is orders of magnitude more 
than any possible flow going the other way. So when people talk about in the press about possible flows out of emerging markets into the development, this is complete nonsense. In fact, the influence of emerging markets on the global economy and on our lives will steadily increase. In 20 years, 90% of cars in the world are produced and consumed in emerging markets. Pick another, pick another uh, good or service for that matter. Commodity markets are already the case. Emerging markets are already, and they are becoming more and more, price setters. As the new Sparta chairman argues, the 21st century has witnessed the world turn itself upside down. Um, if you look at tick data in the US, uh, for the last 15 years, the major reason for holding up via the US Treasury market, the US dollar, is emerging market central bank purchases of US Treasuries. And they are overwhelmingly dominant now in the investor base for US Treasuries outside the US. Yes, of course, central banks, the Fed has enormous uh, portfolio, but that's irrelevant when you think about the dollar risk. Because, of course, the US has no uh, effective ability to intervene in foreign exchange markets because it doesn't have any foreign exchange reserves. This is a major global imbalance. It's, it's, it's created a completely artificial foreign exchange environment where emerging market currencies are about 30 or 40 percent undervalued compared to the dollar. Or put it another way, the dollar is massively overvalued. Um, so we have a world where we need prejudices because they enable us to uh, avoid thinking about difficult problems. My book, my message, is not an easy one. I'm saying that to complement your very fine CFA education, you need to supplement that with trying to introduce macroeconomics in particular, but also politics and history and anthropology for that matter, right in the center of your strategic thinking of asset allocation, not as an afterthought. As the major global economies continue to struggle, the US buried by a mountain of debt, the Eurozone facing disintegration, and Japan barely hobbling out of recession, Western fund managers must open up to the opportunities offered by emerging markets to ensure a financially secure and stable future to us, their clients, and to our children.